Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today I wanted to talk about and then go through some experiments that I'm working on with dry point etching. With the dry point etching, I'm taking this plastic that I'm picking up from Hobby Lobby, but I think you could use any type of plastic. Um, you can use copper, uh, I think they use tin, aluminum, um, recycled plastic, plastic from salad containers, etc. You scrape into it or scratch into it using either a tool designed for it. Here's a metal scribe. Or you can use um, a sharp metal point, I think a sharpened nail. Then from there, after you scratch your image into whatever you're working with, you rub your ink into it. And here I have the Aqua Intaglio ink. From there, you wet your paper, you run it through a press, something to compress the two, and it transfers the ink from the grooves to the paper. Okay, so that's kind of the process in a nutshell. Um, here's one that I did. It's hard to see because it still has the ink in it. There's really no point in me cleaning it out because you kind of get a limited run of prints. And I exhausted my... my printing capability of that plate, I think. So that's what the result looks like. You can see, for me, it's currently having a pen and ink type of effect, which is perfectly fine, but I want to achieve something atmospheric, moody, and uh, tonalist. From my limited, limited understanding of printing and printmaking, there's different types of um, techniques. Intaglio, I believe, is wherever you um, you coat your plate, you're working with a metal, with some sort of wax or some sort of material. You scrape the wax away, you use acids to etch the metal, and then from there, that creates your plate. There's other ones, um, Aquatint, I believe, where there's some sort of resin coating that you do. I'm not sure if you remove the resin or do different densities of it, and it's meant to help uh, get gradations and area of, of tone. So far, all of that seems outside of working in the art room, working in the bathroom. I really don't want to introduce any new chemicals beyond my dark room and alternative process chemicals into the art room. And the aqua tint, there's apparently like some sort of you have to get the resin in the air in a box and get it to fall on it. I don't know about it enough yet to want to get into that. So, uh, using what I have at hand and trying different just approaches, we'll see what happens. Um, so, so far, I have the scribe, which I used to scratch this plate. I'm not sure if I had mentioned um, the razor blades that I glued together, but I didn't use them for this one because... There was just no need and I'm just trying to work my way up. I also have this kind of wire brush that my friend lent me and I'll see if maybe that'll help me create a um, area of tone. Okay, so I'm putting this over black so you can see the scrapes. I'm gonna pause the, actually, you know what? I'll ink it on camera just so you can see the inking. Guys, be nice. There's the cats. I'll ink it on camera so you can see that. And then um, we'll make the press uh, print. We'll look at it and I'll see where I can go from there. Um, this is the carbon black ink, which gives a nice dark tone. I have the bone black. I also have the light red oxide and I have the um, Van Dyke Brown. I'm thinking maybe one of the experiments will be to maybe do a combination of the black, the two different blacks, and see what happens with that. I'm grabbing some uh, newsprint, newspaper, just rubbing this around. Uh, plate and material wise, I think Acua sells a clear plate. The clear plates are good to let you 
see through if you're tracing over something. Um, I'm sure some other brands sell clear plates as well. I think there's also brands that just sell, sell dark plates. But um, I'm just using cheap resources right now. Seeing if I like the process, which I definitely do. And then from there, seeing how far I want to really invest into it. And also see the feedback that I get from it. So the initial inking for me seems to be the most tedious because after I print it, I then have some residual ink there and you then seem good to go. All right, so you can kind of see how it's looking currently and how I'm wiping away the excess ink. I'm gonna pause the camera, I'm gonna wet my paper, I'm gonna do the print and then we're gonna look at it. All right, so I ran it through. I'm using a craft press, a die cutter. And here is my um, print. So you could see the, um, the sketchiness, hopefully, that I'm talking about, where it gives the pen and ink type of look to it. Um, and hopefully trying to clarify what I'm trying to get to is the more atmospheric, moody, um, uh, tonal painterly approach, if that's possible with um, what I have at hand. So my next idea, so that's the first print. My next idea is to apply the ink to get it in the grooves and rather than wiping it all away, uh, leave some on the raised area of this plate. So that'll leave some ink that'll transfer. And I'm thinking that it would add another layer of um, tonality to it. If that makes sense. Where the deep scratches are going to have my heavy ink, light scratches, a lighter approach, and then maybe some soft application of ink on the top would then result in um, a toneless feel. So I think that there should be some ink on top. Let me see if I use my knuckle. Yeah, you can kind of see how there was ink right there. So what I'll do is I'll wet another piece of paper. I'm just using uh, mixed media paper for this experiment uh, that I cut to five by seven, just since I'm going to go through a lot of it with the different um, experiments. And we'll jump into this one and see how that one looks. All right, so now this is going to be the one with a little bit of ink left on top. I'll pull that. Definitely gives more of a moody feel to it. So I'm going to place the two side by side. And I do have the camera zoomed in. So we'll see if I can fit both on the screen. I'm running out of space with all like the papers used for um, wiping and rubbing and all that. All right. So we definitely get a much darker scene. And to be honest, with my very limited, limited knowledge of this, it feels more Rembrandtian. This one has more of a sunlight effect, and this one has more of a uh, moody, cloudy effect. Let's do a third one, and we'll wipe out the excess ink out of the sky here making that the lightest part of the picture. We will wind up having a uh, very symmetrical picture like we do now. And I think that's gonna really emphasize that shape on the inside, unfortunately. But these are just more you know, sketches and experiments and finished pieces. So uh, what I'm gonna do is ink the plate up. I'm gonna put these on the side. 
restate the experiment. So this goes through a lot of um, kind of blotter paper and paper towels. I try to use uh, newspaper, newsprint, and old uh, outdated books. And I can't imagine what it's like working in a print shop or doing this technique or the more in-depth ones with the, the chemicals. But it must be a lot of fun. Let's pull with the paper towel. So here's the sky around the trees. Hopefully you can see that lightening, that softening up. We'll take it out there. So I'm allowing excess ink to sit on the top of the plate in the, um, the trees, the landscape, uh, whatever this tree mass is, and pulling it out of the sky. I'm going to pause the camera, wet my paper, and run this plate, run this print. All right, so let's pull this one. Okay, so this one was an experimentation with varying degrees of ink sitting on the surface of the plate. Here was just kind of a complete coverage. I just want to see so you can see. And here was the, um, the initial. So looking at it so far, I think you can achieve varying degrees of kind of times of day or maybe weather effects, but we're still um, looking pen and inkish. I think uh, so, so far, and this is just me real time looking at it, sunny sunny but really kind of capturing how that shadow should be and then cloudy and moody what i want to try now is that we have these three different ones side by side is to take the plate itself and if i can find where to go it's kind of a um, bristle brush Kind of scrub it up. We'll see how this affects it texture wise. Oh, <laughs> that was going to affect it really <laughs> quite bad. Let's see what minute mark that happened. 13. 18, 13. So I, I could see some light scraping. Hmm, it seems to smooth down a lot of it. We'll rub some ink into this while I wet my paper. And this will be the last print of this plate. Um, thinking about those fine grooves that that wire brush would make, it's probably like a brass or copper brush. I'm really not sure. I would think that maybe like a steel brush would kind of dig in more. I believe that I might have experimented with steel wool, but the steel wool just leaves pieces of steel wool everywhere and, and you wind up getting steel wool in your fingers and I don't want that around the house with the cats or with me. <laughs> okay, so that's rubbed in. I 
would say it seems to darken overall, but it's going to, of course, play, have an effect on um, the ink on the back that my hands are getting all over it. It doesn't have an effect on the finished product, but it's going to have an effect on what I perceive to be inked. So I'm going to pause that and we'll try this one. So, okay, so this is the last one. Let's pull this all up. Um, it gives the fuzziness, it gives the scratches. I don't think I'm too fond of the look. Let's compare this to each one. Here is the initial. So it does give a softer effect, without a doubt. Kind of gives like a chaotic feel to it. Maybe there's a way to control those marks. It makes this one seem just heavily inked. It also makes this one seem heavily inked. So, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see if I can get all four up there. And let me know what you think. Uh, I'm going to continue with these experiments. Um, there are other tools out there for these techniques and these approaches. And if you like this and you want to support these experiments in this channel, I have a whole bunch of links down below. I have the Patreon with exclusive content, the Kofi, etc. But let's look at this real quick. Original, total ink, excess on top, selective excess ink on top, scratched with a wire brush, and then applied. Let me know which one you like and why, and I will be back. I hope you enjoyed. Y'all take care. Bye.